Less than a month after the release of The Timeless Children, Lockdown Who was launched by Emily Cook as a platform for people to tune in virtually for some fan-favourite Doctor Who episodes. Now, of course, I'm not suggesting that this was a planned distraction from the atrocities of Series 12, nor am I suggesting that the pandemic saved Doctor Who, but Lockdown Who was perhaps the biggest nostalgia party the show has ever hosted, and I can't help but feel that Chibnall wasn't invited. It was a nostalgia trip that continued throughout the year until, of course, Revolution of the Daleks came along, putting the Chibs and Jodie train very much back in the limelight. And now that our focus is back on the show's current state, I understand that my argument in this video will sound odd at first. But looking back at 2020, there were undoubtedly several months in which it didn't feel like Chibnall was running Doctor Who anymore. It was almost as if a collective of fans, writers and, believe it or not, individuals from the BBC had gotten rid of him. This is what happened. This is how Doctor Who rejected Chibnall. Let's get something clear first. Lockdown Who was not initiated by the BBC. Emily Cook is an editor for Doctor Who magazine, which is licensed by the BBC, not created by them. The reason I point this out is that if the BBC had initiated the watch-along scheme, I'm certain we would have seen many more of the Chibnall-era episodes. Because that's right, without the BBC's direct involvement, we didn't see any. The Day of the Doctor, Rose, The Eleventh Hour, The Doctor's Wife, Heaven Sent, Dalek, The Girl in the Fireplace. If you were an outsider to Doctor Who last year, you might have thought the show had ended in 2017. So what did Chibnall do in response? Well, he regrouped some of his writing buddies, managing to drag Stephen Moffat and Paul Cornell into the mix, to produce some new short stories. But this was nothing compared to what Lockdown Who was achieving, bringing old actors and their respective characters back for new extra minisodes, as well as Russell T Davies for a prequel and sequel to Rose. Doctor Who began remembering its glory days, and Chibnall wasn't really there to participate. And of course, Chibnall's exclusion only continued with the arrival of Time Lord Victorious, which was probably the best thing Doctor Who fans could have gotten considering the circumstances. And we really have to thank James Goss for orchestrating this. Creating new books, audios, comics and an animated series which all tied into one overarching plot is a brilliant idea. This MCU-type model of interconnected stories under one encompassing universe is exactly how Doctor Who should be being treated now. It's precisely what Russell T Davies was saying in a recent interview, arguing the show should have spin-offs that culminate into big crossover events. He had already started doing this back in 2009, just to think what Doctor Who could be like now if this type of show running had continued. Again, like with Lockdown Who, it's interesting to see that Chibnall had nothing to do with Time Lord Victorious. And I know that televised Doctor Who and merchandised Doctor Who are run by two separate entities within the BBC, but look, if I were Chibnall <coughs> and I saw this poster advertising a pretty big chunk of Doctor Who merchandise for 2020, I'd be phoning up some BBC executives saying, What the hell is this? Where's Jodie? I'd love to think that a version of this actually happened and that consequently the 13th Doctor just kind of turned up in one of the comics. But actually, that brings me to another way Doctor Who rejected Chibnall. David Tennant. It's no shocker of a point to make, it's pretty hard to miss that David Tennant is everywhere when it comes to Doctor Who outside the TV series, and Time Lord Victorious has had the biggest contribution towards this. What's even more interesting is that there's an increasing amount of 13th Doctor merchandise which also features David Tennant. Not only did we see 13 and 10 come together in Time Lord Victorious, but they also did that in the 13th Doctor's own comic book series. And it's happening in that new VR game. I even noticed in that giveaway promotion for Children in Need they did, oh yep, yeah, there he is! Aside from Tennant, Christopher Eccleston has also helped draw attention away from Chibnall's train wreck. His return to Doctor Who after 15 years via a new series of audios could not have been timed better. The 13th Doctor doesn't sell. It's an argument I heard many times last year, and the BBC only continued to prove it. It's a pretty big insult to Chibnall, from the people he's working for. And was Time Lord Victorious any good? Well, yeah, I'd say it was. I enjoyed the comics and actually started getting me into audios. However, I can see that other opinions might be hindered by Daleks, the animated series that came with the event. There's no hiding from the fact that it looked terrible, and it's sad how many amateur 3D animators on YouTube alone could have done a much better job. But as for the story, I enjoyed it for what it was. Showing Daleks as individual characters is something we don't see enough of. 
and making the audience root for them as the protagonists is an intriguing concept. Unfortunately for Chibnall, this only made his following Dalek story look even more pathetic. Revolution of the Daleks definitely could have been helped if it had reintroduced the Emperor and perhaps the Strategist from the Dalek series. And I know that the New Year's special had probably already been filmed by the time Daleks was in development, but it's just another example of the BBC making Chibnall look bad. As much as I regret to say it, we now look onward to series 13, which I imagine will only feel like more of a drag now that we've heard Whittaker is supposedly leaving at the end of it. Although it's definitely been relieving to hear about this, Doctor Who is nowhere near recovery, not while Chibnall's still around. I think he had planned for 13 to stay on longer, but only so he could claim she was the longest running Doctor in New Who and stick it on a plaque on his wall. But even then, Chibnall has never really had any plans. It's all very well him saying in every press conference he does that, oh, John Bishop is the next companion. Oh, we've had to keep this one secret for a long, long time. Oh, Captain Jack coming back. Oh, no, that's been cooked up for a long time. Oh, the timeless child. Oh, no, yeah, I knew that from the start. Oh, the Doctor being female. Oh, yeah, that was one of my conditions for being showrunner. You can keep telling us this all you like, Chibs, but if you don't show us, <laughs> we've got no reason to believe you. As for what Chibnall's next move should be, I actually think he should give Joe Martin a series, and it's not even because I think it would be any good, but just out of pure decency. Look at it this way. Let's say Joe Martin turns up once or twice in series 13, but then is never really seen again, and a few years down the line gets an audio drama or a book. What will it look like for Chibnall? It'll look like he introduced a new incarnation into his series, just so he'd get all the attention for having the first black female Doctor. He's certainly achieved that part, but Chibnall's got to understand that he can't just introduce a new Doctor and then cast them aside. Some could argue that Moffat didn't include the War Doctor enough after his introduction, but I think that character in his arc would done justice in the Day of the Doctor. If Chibnall and the BBC don't follow through with Joe Martin's incarnation, they will contradict everything groundbreaking about the casting of the actress in the first place. They've got to be careful about what they do next, because if they get it wrong, there'll be a lot of people, fans of the show and general audiences alike, who won't be happy at all. But yeah, don't get me wrong, I don't think Joe Martin's a great Doctor. I've rewatched all her scenes and she's she's better than Whittaker, but that's not really saying much, is it? <laughs> Chibnall owes it to her though, that's what I'm saying. So in conclusion, I think it's becoming clearer to the wider public just how badly Chibnall and the BBC have treated Doctor Who. A lot of things haven't helped Chibnall this past year. The backlash from the Timeless Children, being neglected from Lockdown Who, having the limelight taken by Time Lord Victorious, and another worst rated special in the show's history. And now it even feels like his best mate Jodie is abandoning him. Oh, and of course, we can't forget this priceless clip. Yeah, I can't wait for that. Will you be watching that Christmas Day? It's actually New Year's Day, I think. Yes, I will actually. I think I'll, I'll tune in for a bit of Christmas Doctor Who. Why is it on New Year's Day? No, they've downgraded it. I'd like to say a massive thank you to everyone who's continued to watch and support Chibs this past year, as well as my other videos. I never imagined it would get that kind of reaction, and reading all your comments has been thoroughly enjoyable. I'd also like to say happy birthday to Chris Chibnall. Today is his birthday, and without him, none of this would ever have happened. Something I'm sure we've all dreamt about in the past couple of years. I'm sure I'll be here next year, but until then, keep well and watch some decent TV. Thanks again. Goodbye.